storage for their manure. They sized them 50% larger to be that much more cautious, careful, so that they don't have an accident on the farm. They're, they actually have 270 days worth of storage. And they did this on their own. They chose to do it because they're trying to be good environmental stewards and responsible citizens. If you look in their soil test results, you have what you call soil bores and logs that go down to about, they varied from you know, 10 to, or 11 or 12 feet up almost up to 20. It shows that the soils that are included in that are clay type composition and clay is typically impermeable to movement and moisture and things like that. So first of all, you're building it on a, a surface that has clay type soils. The second thing, when you construct the lagoons, they're gonna line it with 18 inches of clay that's specifically designed to line lagoons with. And this is not just a practice that's practiced in agriculture, but it's also practiced in other industries. And it's a commonly accepted practice. You can do what you call uh, vinylized rubber linings, which is fine, but engine, throughout the engineering community, and for those of y'all that don't know, don't know this, my background is in engineering. Before I came to Farm Bureau, I worked for a large consulting engineering firm in Little Rock. I've got a background in environmental engineering, a master's degree in environmental engineering, and I worked in environmental engineering consulting for about eight years before I came to Farm Bureau. So the practices they're implementing on this farm related to their lagoons and the liners, commonly accepted engineering practices. Nothing wrong with them at all. Um, if you look at their soil tests for, for their land application sites, the soil test phosphorus levels, that's the level of phosphorus that's currently in those fields, is relatively low. So, especially compared to other parts, uh, other places across the state. So what that tells you is, is when they can apply that manure, it's gonna benefit the soils and those, and those fields, it's gonna increase their hay production uh, with the addition of phosphorus, and nitrogen, other nutrients and things like that. Um, and it's, like I mentioned before, they're gonna make those applications based on the Arkansas Phosphorus Index, which is one of the most restrictive indexes in the country already mentioned that their plans are designed by professional engineers and also my understanding is uh, I'm pretty sure that their fields are outside of the floodplains and my understanding is they've actually never seen like a flood so they're above the 100 year floodplain and there's not a risk of that happening as well. Um, just as far as comments that were made at the public hearing that's kind of a lot of the technical stuff that's related to the permit how you go about applying for a permit, the process that you have to go through to do it, how the general CAFO permit was created, uh, the opportunity that people had to comment in that process. And mind you, we also, I attended, I think I tried to attend every meeting across the state, and I had six 